yeah. the gaming streams are cool though I, I did enjoy them and i think the thing is game is gaming so popular right so popular everyone's doing it can you see it taking off with the muslim style doing it as well can you see because I, I mean i've seen the muslim gamers league i've seen yours very early days. Well, let me ask you, why would somebody come to Muslim gaming streams when there's so many out there already? Uh, what What is the difference or the angle that you, you, you're coming from? That That's a very good question. And um, I, I guess maybe I hadn't thought of it this way as much, but the more I kind of reflect on it, it's like somebody giving up music. The first thing they, they'll go to is nasheeds that have music in it. Then afterwards, they'll go to nasheeds with no music in it. And then eventually you go on just Quran and then you just start listening to birds tweeting or something and, and the Quran or, or whatever it is. So yeah. it's, yeah, it's weaning yourself. So somebody that's like proper into gaming and watching something visually stimulating, uh, to be honest, bro, like even with them, like even if you listen to what they're saying, they're not giving you value. Like with us, the thing is, Alhamdulillah, like even if you watch our one, you're getting value from it. Like you're hear hearing Jordan's experience whilst he's getting his butt kicked. At a racing game so <clears throat> it's a win-win situation you see uh mm. not for jordan because obviously he's losing but i mean for the audience it's a win-win yeah jordan's trying to win but i mean the audience uh, wins yeah winning is not in jordan's vocabulary when it comes to uh, racing with the big dog i'll be back <laughs> You sound like the white Terminator. <laughs> yeah, like the Cockney Terminator. I'll be back, mate. Back, Sorry, I'll be what? Back. Back later. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I think it's very interesting, bro. Like, even if they come off our streams and be like, no, we want to listen to scholars and ulama and we want to learn about Quran and the Sunnah, go, go for it, bro. Like, that's absolutely fine. But there's some yeah. kids. Like they'd rather like bro, even some some of the gameplay I, I was watching on YouTube, the way it's edited, like it is entertaining. You would sit there and watch it. But if you yeah. watch somebody else that you know will entertain you, but also give you value as well. Like we're not playing like crappy games. Like we're playing some good, good games on a good console. So it's yeah. not like we're behind. And I think that's what Muslim Muslims are ahead of the game. You know what I'm saying? Like we can stand head to head. We don't need no government funding. Alhamdulillah, that's the thing, that's the power of one believer. If one believer is mobilized, he or she can cause some serious damage. Yeah, obviously yeah. in a positive way, not in a in a, in a in a violent way. I don't want to get your stream uh, shut down. Uh, yeah, I did start off the stream by saying you're definitely going to blow up. And uh, I don't think... It's... I'm going to clip these and have Dave reacting to them later. I'm going <laughs> <laughs> to... Yeah, what's that? <laughs> Would you call me? <laughs> that's... <laughs> you know, when someone sneezes, they say Alhamdulillah. Then yeah. the, the one who hears the Alhamdulillah says Yarhamukallah. And then yeah. the when the sneezer hears the other person say Yarhamukallah, they say Yahtikum Allah wa Yuslih Balakum. So sneezer, then the response the, the response of the person who heard the sneezer and then going back to the person again. So you sneezed, I heard you. So you say Alhamdulillah, I say Yarhamukallah. You heard me say Yarhamukallah, then you say Yahdikum Allahu wa Yuslih Balakum. Sounds a bit long, but you'll get used to it. I'm going to verify. But the joke it. is. You might be winding me up. I, when someone sneezes next time, I'll be saying that and they'll be like, what? No. <laughs> no, it's, like, it's it, Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it's from the Sunnah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh -huh. But the joke is that um, Ali will just say Alhamdulillah normally, and I'm like, Yarhamukallah. He just looks at me. He's like, bro, I didn't sneeze. And then, like. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, that's that's where that comes from. But yeah, thanks for thanks for killing the joke. Uh, hope you're happy with yourself. Now, uh, awful, be happy with yourself. You're colonizing my joke as well, yeah. <laughs> the one thing I wanted to mention, actually, um, just because it was funny, and like I said, it, it would have been a great sketch. I wish I would have just pulled out my phone, but I was too embarrassed at the time. Was me eating, obviously, the curry. And uh, not really knowing. Did I do better the second time, right? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. You were natural the second time. Cool. And the thing yeah, is, yeah, what, you, yeah. what you said is interesting. Is I can't really use the excuse of being British because British people love curry. I think curry is our national dish. <laughs> so I, I, think, I, really use that. I can be. Like, what do you expect? It's not my culture. Well, actually, curry is my culture. <laughs> curry is my my country's favorite dish. You know, so, uh, Gordon Ramsay was asked. This was in Channel Four a long time ago. I remember it was like one of these adverts. He, he was asked like what's your favorite dish and he goes it's got to be the ultimate curry 
I remember that because I was just watching it and I was like, oh, Gordon Ramsay, yeah? Before he starts effing and blinding. But uh, <laughs> um, till the end now, inshallah, until, uh, you know, Allah gives us tawfiq. We are now a brotherhood. Um, and it, it's an honor, man. And that's why people that are watching, that's that's what it is. Like, if you show strength, like even when I started Smile to Jannah, like people say, oh, how did you meet Hamza and Ali and stuff like that? But bro, when you do stuff for the sake of Allah, Allah will open the doors. I, I'm going to be honest. I was a nobody. And I still am a nobody. Like simple guy doing simple things. And Allah made me, you know, meet such people just because I was speaking about him and, and his prophet. And that's that's the amazing thing that all of us know each other. And we're even on the stream and our, our common kind of common thing our common thread is allah and his rasul and his prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam may peace mercy of, uh, and blessings of allah be upon him it's just remarkable and just kind of taking stock of that it's it's really powerful and i think that's what people lack people that don't have religion and they go to these football games and they try to get that from these concerts and everything but you yeah. love football though isn't it jordan absolutely hate it uh, but... <laughs> I think I read a stat, and I did. I mentioned it in one of my um, Dave and Jeff stat um, vids is that apparently when England lose in the World Cup, domestic violence goes up by a third. And that's I, that, nuts, that, isn't it? Like you know, England lose and you go and beat your wife up. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I don't like. Okay, I've seen people cry over football, and even that's a bit much for me. Like, come on, mate. But um, but yeah, it's uh, the hysteria around the World Cup is something I never. Yeah, me personally, I hope England go out in the knockout stages because the country goes completely mad. It just, it doesn't, um, yeah. But anyway, I better shut up about my opinion on that. No, but there's, there's a good point that you said. It's actually reminded me of something else. You know, maybe Jordan, where he is, that some people, they just, the haram with haram piled on top of the haram. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. just, uh, they, they, they're drinking, they're intoxicated, number one. Number two, they've gambled. Yeah, yeah. they've got like a large amount of sum. And when they lose, like, that's it. Like, they, they become pissed off. Like, maybe they lost a car. And the wife says, look, I told you not to bet the car. <laughs> Shut it! <laughs> Trace! <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. they, bro. Drugs, gambling. Uh, like, come on. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, you, yeah. you, you're just being unfair to your body and your soul. Like, eventually, that sort of stuff will uh, corrupt you and will get you to do the most silliest of things. Yeah. This doesn't make sense. So, but, you know, Jordan, is one thing that I'm really concerned about. Uh, and that's, we've been on a live for like one hour, 16 minutes, and you haven't once condemned ISIS. What's all that about? Yeah, it's, um, it's uh, I mean, me, me being white and Muslim, I've got to have a whole list, haven't I, <laughs> of condemning. Um, do you know what? I do I get asked to condemn ISIS? Do I personally get asked? To, so when I go speaker's corner, yeah, I'm still deflecting, by the way. <laughs> do I ever get asked? I reckon I don't get asked as much as you would. Uh, even people know I'm Muslim. Which is oh, really? Put that. That's interesting. That's really what, what, what do you get asked normally? Uh, well, after they've called me a traitor. Um, why would I join a religion, you know, where all this, all the misks, you know, why am I joining a religion where someone split the moon in half? Why am I, what's wrong with me? What's happened in my life? Actually, that's the most common question. What's happened? It, it, you, you couldn't get a girlfriend. You were in prison. You're depressed. You're not ginger. So all of these kind of stereotypes of a, and like you said, you know what? So many people revert to Islam every day and we don't see them. The only ones you probably do see on the media are, you know, the Anjum Chowdhury you know, gingers or whoever it is, you know, the, the extreme ones that you see uh, convert into Islam. So yeah, but, you know, being a Muslim myself in revert groups, so many of them are educated. You know, it's a mixture. Some are not educated, some are. Some have been to prison, some haven't. Uh, and to be honest, for me, if I, I reckon if I, if I was to go to prison once in my life, I don't know what crime I maybe killing a duck. But if, if I did, <laughs> if I did, I reckon if you're at the lowest point of your life, that is going to be the time when you actually look into ask you yourself the big questions, isn't it? Because I think mm. for me, I needed to take myself out of it, without my niece converting to Islam, I would have just carried on doing what I was doing quite happily. My life was fine before, you know, it wasn't like I had it in the back of mind that something was missing and I knew, you know, bits and that. Yeah. I think your fit was always there. I think the most um, extreme atheist still has his fit switched on. They just cover it with lots of stuff, you know? And I was probably one of those guys. Um, yeah, and, and I think a lot of people, um, you, you mentioned it before about people may look at me and, and think, but he, he give up, he given up all that good stuff. 
Uh, and I kind of want to communicate communicate to Muslims that you know that's not good stuff. That's not even stuff. A brother asked said to me the other day, uh, a brother who who's, people know I won't out, out his name, but he said, "I'm quite envious that you've been through what you've been through, so you know things you know that we don't." Uh, but I believe you're better off not going. You know, I think in Islam we don't take chances. You're you're better off not getting involved in all that stuff. You know, because it does damage you. Um, and so yeah, without going too deep into it, uh, I I think. You know, to say about your point before, a lot of people will look at someone like me who's converted to Islam and they think the grass is greener. How, how did I give all that up? When in reality, common sense, you should give all that up, you know, you should give all that up. Yeah, that's a very good point. That's a very good point. And that, that's why I said I think that's what makes your point very strong. The fact that you, you, you have stripes, Jordan, you, you've come from stripes. You know what I'm saying? You're you're a commander with stripes that like people can see your experience. That's that's why what you say is, is more powerful. Mm. Then say some other branded, random bearded individual that doesn't have experience. <laughs> uh, it's interesting. It's, in, it's interesting that side of it as well. I won't go on too long. Uh, the the um, where you could probably say things that I can't, and vice versa, isn't it? You've got a different kind of, you know. It's interesting how the different how, how the different people we can kind of get involved in different topics. Because uh, I'm pretty sure if if I'd said some of the stuff that you say on your streams, I would have um, you know the whole Asian community coming after me. Um, <laughs> so, so. Someone said, uh, smile to Jano, it's time to wear other hats other than black ones. You know what? I've I've got uh I've got two, but the thing is they don't match with anything. Like the two, like I'll have the white one, but then I'm wearing a white top. But mm. a, a white hat on a black top looks weird. A black goes with anything. Um and then the red one looks a bit off. And then the blue one, the blue one looks black on camera. So sometimes I do have the blue one, but it looks black on camera. This one is is perfect because, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't need anything. It's the, it's the lazy man's hat. It just fits on nicely. And I, think, I think camo, you'd definitely be stopped from tubes and stuff. So. <laughs> but, uh, I think if it was camo, I wouldn't only be stopped. I'd probably did search all my hard drives and my boxes as well. <laughs> they do a cavity search outside Sainsbury's. What were you saying? You asked about the Uyghurs, yeah? Yeah, what, what's... Your, I mean, I'm late to the party. I mean, to be honest, I read the recent reports um, and, and there's always been this thing like no one's really sure what's going on over there. We're pretty sure something's going on, but we don't know to what scale. There was a recent report came out uh, where the Turkish refugees, the Uyghur Muslims that have made it to Turkey, have done their... you know, put their experiences out and it looks, you know, they're all consistent with what they're saying. And it, it's horrendous stuff. It's stuff that you just can't believe. And I, I always think, you know, when I think back to a time of Srebrenica or the Holocaust, how do these things happen with the world looking on? How is it possible? Um, and again, it happens again. It's like we don't even learn from history, do we? But um, yeah, what, what's your, because I feel like I'm late for the party, really. Uh, I think many people have been doing stuff, a lot of stuff already. Um, but what's your opinion on it? What, what can be done? Are we doing enough? I know it's not an easy question, but um, it's something that's definitely think, playing in my mind. Yeah. I think like a, a for, for a layman, because with me, uh, like sometimes I just simplify stuff in my head. The thing is, the the Uyghur stuff, there's like even in hadith, the, there's a principle. Like when you get like a numerous uh, weak hadith, when there's, there's so many coming together, it strengthens it. Yeah, when you mm -hmm. hear so many kind of uh, things alluding to one thing, it, it strengthens it. Like yeah. you, you can't get so many people pointing to one direction and that one direction being wrong. So... There, there's many kind of reports about Uyghurs and what's going on there, where there's aerial footage, whether it's UN, whether it's this charity, whether it's this human rights organization or whatnot. There is uh, there, there is definitely stuff going on and it's in line with what, what China kind of believes in. So that's, that's in terms of the authenticity behind the thing. Now, number two, um, it's within the interest of the UK and the US to also be in line with this yeah because they've had issue with china for a very long time in fact there's a very good documentary of john pilger it's called the impending war on china yeah i think yeah. should be free on youtube yeah john pilger i think his documentary is for a muslim i've heard, I've heard, about, that. I've heard about that yeah many muslims, are into that. many muslims feel that this is a you know it's, it's a yeah it's, a, it's america going against china and some of it's made up many people are saying that you know yeah but the thing bro is like i was thinking that as well but whether it's america going against china or not the, the bottom line still stands that our people are still getting hurt 
Um, and some people, they, they look at the whole politics behind it and be like, yeah, we don't want to be supporting America. We'd rather support China as this or that. But the thing is, at what cost? Yeah, I'm sorry, but it, it obviously it can't be at the cost of our own brothers and sisters. That's the same thing in Syria as well. Like in Syria, it is Russia and its allies versus America and its allies. That's that's pretty much what's going on over there as well. Yeah. Um, but I mean, there our people are in the midst of things, and here our people are. What we say anyway? We're talking about the Uyghurs, and yeah, when I was being, I wasn't, you know, I'm not, not suggesting that they're. For me, there's no doubt that some, you know, it's, it's going. No, the, the way, yeah, the way I got your question was like, uh, like, how do we understand it as lay people? That that's how yeah. I understood the question. I think that's a very good question, to be honest. I didn't take it as you were uh, doubting it. Uh, yeah. But I was just saying, from from if I was to take like a layman's perspective, and uh, possibly even a skeptic's perspective. And you just look at the variety of uh, news that we've had, and then you take the politics into consideration as well. Then you re realize, look, some something is going on. Uh, obviously, our duty is to. Oh. Is it going again? We can still see him. All right. So, look, Jazakallah Kefir for only tuned in. Um, Jazakallah Kefir Zishan for coming on. Um, like I say, I've, I've been lucky that he's been sort of um, sort of teaching me bits and bobs about the game, about the trade. Uh, I never thought I'd be getting into comedy kind of dour, um, but I see it as an effective way, and uh, and it's not going to be my the only string to my bow, you know. Uh, I'm planning on doing some other stuff as well, uh, inshallah. So yeah, salam alaikum.